So today we're talking about device configuration management. So um, why? Why are we talking about this? Uh, first off, because people cause error. Depending on the analysts that you you read, um, somewhere between 69 to upwards of 90% of issues are actually caused by change management errors or human error. Um, a dot in a routing table that gets misplaced, a mistyped password, uh, all these kind of things can cause major havoc in your networks. Um, another reason you might want to look at doing an automated backup is auditors want proof. So if you've got any compliance initiatives like SOX or PCI or any of those, you may have to offer proof that you have been following good configuration change management procedures and having an automated backup system will help you do that. And last but not least is significantly increase your recovery time. Remember, people cause errors. Network management systems can help you recover quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is schedule automated backups so you don't have to worry about this. This is the set it and forget it portion of the show. So we're going to go over here to Configuration Center and go to Auto Backup Plan. And, and as you can see, I've already got a weekly plan enabled here. Um, but we're going to go and start a new one. So we're going to click Add. We're going to go Monthly Backup. There we go. And we're going to do this every month. And we're going to say this is going to be the first day of every month. And then we are going to say at 23.59 and 59 seconds, so right before midnight. And again, if you uh, are having issues with that, hover. You'll get the time format here. And we're going to go and put our description. This is going to be our monthly backup. So because we've already got one um, backup network-wide devices, right? we're not going to be able to do that. OK, so this is going to fail. Network-wide devices, backup plan already exists. OK. Wonderful. So instead, we're going to choose just a couple of devices here. So perhaps you may have some devices in remote areas where you want to have those backed up at a different schedule as everything else. You can kind of play around with this and do what makes sense for you here. So we'll pick out that uh, Cisco router and a couple of um, 3Com slash HP switches, Comware based switches. And we're going to click OK. There we have our new monthly backup has been created. So, and once that's created, we can actually go in and look at the backup history as well. So, of course, in the monthly backup, there's nothing there. We just created it. So, let's look at the weekly backup. So, as we can see, I had some partial successes and one that outright failed. So, obviously, I've got some work to do here to clean up my system. So, device configuration management. Configuration center. Configuration center. And this will take in, us into a screen where we'll be able to work with the configurations. And, and this is the CMS, the configuration management system, um, all the repository for your software, all that thing is going to, stuff is going to come in here for a specific device. So for this HP 5500EI, we're going to click on configuration management. And we'll scroll over here. And as you can see, we've got some information. It's a actually a 3Com 4800G, but again, that's the exact same hardware device. Um, the auto backup period is listed here when it was last backed up. The current running software, if I had a baseline defined for this, I would have it in here. Latest available version, if there was a newer version of code available. And I do have my baselines for the configurations, um, running and startup configurations that are already in here. So I'm going to click backup again. There we go. Another backup of the startup and running to give you guys an idea of how this is going to work on a, on a longer term basis. So now you can see we've got baseline and common configuration. So a baseline is the last known good configuration. And a common configuration is just a configuration that has been, happened over time. So we can go in here, we can compare the baseline and we, to the common. And this is exactly what we should be seeing. No changes. Auditors like this, we can now prove that we know what the baseline was. We followed our change control procedure. And we're going to be able to, to show them very quickly. So if we had to make a change, I can just simply click on that Make Baseline button. And as you can see now, the icons have changed and the newer configurations have just become the baseline. So if you're having issues in your network, one of the first things you might want to check is um, just do a configuration baseline audit. 
So again, in the Configuration Center. And really quickly, this allows you to look at your latest startup and running configurations. And IMC has automatically already compared them against the baseline startup and running configuration. So as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of identicals here. Um, I've got the MSM devices that they seem to have something that's changed in it. So I'm going to have to go check those later and make sure those changes were valid and actually change the baseline to the newer version if I accept those changes. So it gives me a really quick, easy way to find out what's changed and revert it if I need to. So the other thing that, that is really nice about having a configuration management system um, like IMC in place is you're going to be able to quickly develop scripts, or in the case of IMC, perhaps use some of the uh, default scripts that ship with the product, to do tasks that you're going to be doing on an ongoing basis. Um, things like perhaps deploying radius to specific sites. You know, we can have specific to Commodore V5 or V3 or specific to NXOS or Juniper, so on and so on. So let's look at, uh, at adding a specific template here. So we're going to again click on configuration templates. And in this case, we want to keep things organized. We're going to say add, um, add folder here. And we're just going to put in a name here. Um, so this is the control issues scripts folder. So let's call it something uh, pretty easy to remember who this belongs to. There we go, control issues scripts. And then script repository for yours truly. Click OK. So now we have. You can see here the game, given name was not valid. So again, we can click on the question mark. We can see exactly why this was not valid. So in this case, I've got a space. I have to eliminate the spaces. So let's go over here. And we'll just put in underscores again. Um, gives the uh, illusion of a space. And it is syntactically valid. Click OK. Our folder has been created. We'll open up our folder. So when you can add a script, you have choices here. Manually add, CLI, import from file, or import from a backup file. So for us today, we're going to import from the previous existing device backup. So if you've already got a device that is your golden configuration, it's the basis for everything. You know it's good. You know it's how you want it. It allows you to quickly import that and, and really create a script from there. So um, again, we're going to change this one to template type for segment because all we're going to use on this one is change the administrative password on the local device. So as you can see, uh, we've got the template name. Let's change this to something meaningful. And again, um, underscores, make sure it's a valid configuration name. We've got the applicable devices, which is based on the SNMP SysOID. We've seen that in other videos. So one of the things here which it always uh, slips my mind is the exact syntax of the of the variables. So we're going to go in here, click on the help button, and there we go. So it's dollar sign with one of the squiggly brackets, variable name, end. So we're going to go, we're going to highlight some stuff here, and we'll get back to the portion we want, which is just the local admin password. So we have password cipher on, so of course we can't see what this is. We're going to cut and paste the variable in here, and we're going to go in, delete out IP address, and we're going to call it the new admin password. So this is a variable that will be passed when we try to deploy this script and allow you to change the admin password on the fly. Um, we could take out the authorization attribute level 3 and the service type, but to be honest, uh, it's not going to hurt anything by leaving it in here. And if someone has changed something with your attribute levels, this is equivalent to um, um, level 15 on a Cisco device. Again, you want to make sure you have the rights to be able to log back in. You don't lock yourself out. So now that we've created this, we can very easily click on Operation and Deploy. Select Devices. So we'll select a couple of switches here, one which is valid and one which is invalid. So we'll take the 4210 and the 5500 EI. We'll move these down and click OK. There we go. And you can see it does not match the configuration, so this is the Sysoid comparison. So we'll just get rid of this one, Delete, click OK. We're out of here. So you can see this is just a, a verification to make sure that you don't do something silly and try to deploy uh, a, a HP Comware configuration to an HP Procurve switch or a Comware configuration to a Cisco switch or something like that.
So now that we're going in here, um, the next thing we're going to get prompted for is the new admin password. So this allows you to dynamically put in the new variables that you want um, for any of these scripts. It uh, offers you a lot of flexibility here. So we'll put the new password in as password. Um, again, don't do that in the real world, please. I'm sure there's security people uh, just shaking their heads right now. Um, schedule type once. We're, we could schedule it for you know, later in the night if you want to do something like that. Um, we will do it immediately just so you guys can see this. Task description. We're going to click next. And now we can actually look at the configuration content if we want. So this is what's actually going to be pushed to the device. So again, you can see password cipher with a, this string of password. Click finish. And then we will watch this go. So there we go. Um, it is successfully been created. We can click refresh to see if this is uh, how fast this is going to go. We can click into the actual task and say, OK, it's backup is started. That's its execution status. Look at the details um, and the time that we took to do that. You can now see the backup running configuration, backup starting configuration. All that stuff has been done. Let's refresh here. And now you can see it actually has finished, succeeded. And we can even view the changes directly from here. So of course, this doesn't mean much because we put that cipher keyword, which is going to cipher the password. It's not in your configuration file. So the last thing we're going to do here is, as we've made a change, is go back into the configuration center for this specific device, which is the 5500EI. And we are going to change the baseline configuration. So we made a change. We changed the administrative password in the running configurations, right? And now we want to back make the baseline. So this is the new last known good configuration. And again, this is important so that you know where this device was golden, OK? So we can now go click on device name. So this is another nice feature here. I'll just do a quick little tour. Um, in the alarms, you can see the during backup found that the running configuration um, file has changed. So we can click on that. And this is the beauty of, of HP IMC, that your change management system is linked directly into your configuration management. So again, my device has sent a trap. It's found out that the configuration here has changed. So this is real-time um, change alarm notification. Kind of a nice thing. And the last thing is, you remember, we made the change to the running configuration, not the startup configuration. So you probably want to make sure, now that we've tested and, and verified it, that it actually, you save the configuration on the device. OK? So you click on the Save Configuration button on the resource page. The device configuration has saved successfully. You might be tempted to put a save or a write command at the end of your configuration template. I would recommend against doing that. Um, if you've made a mistake, you probably want to be able to back it out somehow. Um, one of the things you may want to look at is doing a reload after 5 minutes or 20 minutes. So if you do lock yourself out of the device, you'll be able to at least get back up to your last startup config. See you guys next time on the next IMC management tutorial.